following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, three days that changed world history. The key is freedom. Fox News' Brett Baer takes us behind the scenes of Reagan's visit to Moscow. This is the perfect setting. Then, a toddler falls into a family pool. When he goes quiet, something's not right. And is underwater for 10 minutes. Her lips are blue. How a team of prayer warriors helps save her life. This is what the church is called to do. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club, folks. We've got a lot of stuff for you today. I mean, the oh, things are just going on all over the world, and you want to be with us because we'll tell you about them. The world is watching as President Trump meets with the one-on-one -on -one with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. That's taking place in Singapore. How much history is made depends on whether the president can convince the dictator to get rid of his nuclear arsenal. As far as I'm concerned, the big thing he's got to do is to convince the dictator to free the people that are held in the gulags throughout North Korea. That country is never going to achieve anything unless they let the people free. And whether Kim Jong-un is willing to give up his power to do that, well, it remains a big question mark. Terry? Well, it's the first time that a sitting U.S. president has met a North Korean leader. CBN's national security correspondent Eric Rosales has the latest on this historic summit. President Trump landed in Singapore, confident about his chances of success at the high-stakes summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, tweeting, great to be in Singapore, excitement is in the air, but warning, it's now or never. It's a one-time shot, and I think it's going to work out very well. Hours earlier, Kim touched down, arriving with his sister, and made his way to his hotel in a black limousine with North Korean flags on the hood and bodyguards running alongside. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo saying Kim understands what the United States wants. The talks continue this afternoon, even as we sit here now. Uh, they're in fact moving quite rapidly, and we anticipate they will come to their logical conclusion even more quickly than we had anticipated. Of course, the president's ultimate goal hasn't changed, the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. This is the rogue country is very close to successfully hitting the continental United States with a nuclear missile. U.S. Senator Republican Lindsey Graham said he's drafted an authorization for the use of military force that he wants his Senate colleagues to sign in the event diplomacy fails. There's really only two options, peace or war. Whether he gets an agreement out of this summit, the president believes sitting down with Kim is forward progress. But at a minimum, I do believe at least we'll have met each other. We will have seen each other. Hopefully we will have liked each other. Religious freedom and human rights advocates like Open Doors USA see the summit as an opportunity to help the country's persecuted Christians, sponsoring a global online prayer summit at the exact time the two leaders meet. This is so important because things do shift. And God is the God of the universe. He's bigger than politics. He's bigger than any one leader. And we know these regimes uh, are, are fragile. We know things can change overnight. In the end, the two sides could come up with a peace treaty that would end the Korean War, which is technically still in place since the 1950s. Eric Rosales, CBN News. Thanks, Eric. Uh, you know, uh, North Korea was once a land of churches. It was a very religious country. And uh, after the communists took over, uh, all that's been obliterated, and it's been a, it's been a hideous nightmare for the people living there. Uh, I, I was with the Marines in 1950 and, and in 51, uh, and uh, over in Korea, it, 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 it's, it was a bleak, freezing cold land. But I tell you, uh, if this succeeds, good for the president, but I, I you know, it's, it's sort of iffy. Well, stay with CBNnews.com for live coverage of that summit, as well as the global online prayer meeting. That's uh, at uh, 4 o'clock tonight. It's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. In other news, President Trump shook up the G7 meeting in Canada over the weekend. 
Ephraim Graham has more. Pat, President Trump is lashing out at Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau over trade issues, tweeting from Singapore, sorry, we cannot let our friends or enemies take advantage of us on trade anymore. We must put the American worker first. The president ruffled feathers at the G7 summit, not backing down from stiff tariffs on aluminum and steel imports. Trudeau promised to slap his own tariffs on American goods. The Trump administration fired back. There's a, a special place in hell for any foreign leader that engages in bad faith diplomacy with President Donald J. Trump and then tries to stab him in the back on the way out the door. POTUS is not going to let a Canadian prime minister push him around. Yeah. Him must yeah. not see, see American weakness. President Trump refused to sign a solidarity agreement with the other G7 members and suggested more tariffs could be in the works. Pat? You know, I'm with those people who are a little concerned at this point. Um, I'm a fan of the president, as you probably have learned, but I am concerned about this kind of behavior. Uh, we can't cozy up to our bitter enemies and stick our finger in the eyes of our friends. There are friends, and I think a lot of this needs to be done behind the scenes. If you're displeased with the trade relationships with your uh, allies, then talk to them behind the scenes. Don't have an ar argument and then walk out of a situation and, and fail to sign the communicating that you, have, you yourself have helped draft. Uh, it just leaves us isolated. I think it's, I, I would like to know what the president's game plan is. He may have one. If he does, he needs to tell people, here's what I'm trying to do. Ephraim. Pat, in Britain, demonstrators march for imprisoned activist Tommy Robinson Saturday. Hundreds of angry protesters gathered outside Prime Minister Theresa May's office demanding Robinson's release. Some attempted to breach the security barriers outside the prime minister's office. Robinson is serving a 13-month sentence simply for live streaming outside a courthouse where a Muslim gang was on trial for rape. He's been outspoken about the growing Islamist influence in the UK. He told CBN News in 2016 he's convinced he'll be killed someday. His supporters fear he could be murdered in prison. Here at home, conservatives are preparing for what looks to be an epic battle in November's midterm elections. Over the weekend, headliners at the annual Road to Majority event included Vice President Mike Pence, lawmakers, and one of the people just pardoned by President Donald Trump. Our Jenna Browder brings us more on this story now from Washington. It's an annual event that brings the biggest names in conservative politics together under one roof. And it is worth the fight. The Faith and Freedom Coalition made this year's goal to keep the majority in November. There's a lot of talk right now about the House flipping this fall. How concerned are you? Well, I'd say if the election was today, we'd keep the majority. History plays against us, but if you watch what has happened, since we passed the tax bill, we just hit a million new jobs. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy and other Republican lawmakers are playing up their accomplishments. Judges principled constitutionalist judges defending our rights. Success with North Korea would be another major win. Our president is going into this summit with his eyes wide open. And as he said earlier today, he'll know in the first minute if they're serious and if they're not. Dinesh D'Souza, the conservative filmmaker just pardoned by President Trump, talked about him with me and David Brody. I think that Trump um, uh, Trump, believe it or not, is the true inheritor of the Reagan mantle. He is. It's this same enthusiasm Faith and Freedom hopes will spread to the polls. I could go on and on. I think Ralph Reed and his team are planning an $18 million push to make the case that this election is just as important as 2016. Let's talk about the economy. Yes. How much credit should President Trump get? I think he should get the majority of all the credit. Maybe, but if the House does flip this fall and Republicans lose control, Democrats are likely to pursue Trump's impeachment. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News.
Conservative media icon Charles Karthama is dying of cancer. He says he has only weeks to live. He got his start in mainstream media, but soon became a leading voice on conservative issues, contributing to outlets like Fox News. The 68-year-old has had cancerous tumors removed from his abdomen last August, and despite some health complications, he thought he was making progress toward healing. In a farewell letter, he says he will leave this life with no regrets. Praying for him. Pat? Well, I don't know whether he'll leave it with no regrets, but I've got a regret that he's leaving because he is one outstanding spokesman. You know, I used to watch that program on Fox just to hear what he had to say because he was a brilliant, uh, is a brilliant analyst of uh, current affairs and world affairs, and he, he gets to the heart of the issue with his statements. So uh, he, he's he'll be sorely missed, uh, he, I tell you. I've been wondering where he was and that this health thing is, is uh, uh, difficult uh, and uh, one would hope that somewhere in the miracle of the Lord there might be a healing for him. But he's been a great voice and a, a tremendous uh, intellect and a very brave fighter because he's had that, uh, you know, he broke his neck of diving into a swimming pool and he's been paralyzed, but he, he, he's in a wheelchair, but you'd never know it. So my hat's off to a great man, and my sorrow goes with his passing. Ephraim. Pat, celebrity suicides are calling attention to an alarming epidemic in America. Fashion designer Kate Spade and famed chef Anthony Bourdain both took their own lives last week. And new research now shows more people die from suicide than murder or car accidents. As Lori Johnson reports, suicide touches all types of people, including the rich and famous and even Christians. The CDC issued a devastating report showing the suicide rate increased a whopping 25% in less than just two decades, now making it into the top 10 leading causes of death. They pointed out that in 2016 alone, 45,000 Americans took their own lives. The very same week the CDC released its suicide report, two celebrities stunned the world by apparently taking their lives. Police say 55-year-old fashion icon Kate Spade hanged herself in her Park Avenue apartment. And 61-year-old traveling TV chef Anthony Bourdain reportedly hanged himself in a luxury French hotel. Yeah, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes that says, all the labors of a man's hands are for his mouth but his soul goes unsatisfied. You know with money and fame comes a lot of pressure. I think their own unique world of pain. As president of the American Association of Christian Counselors, Dr. Timothy Clinton says even people of faith struggle with suicidal depression and shouldn't be ashamed to seek help. The church, uh, the community of uh, believers out there need to get uh, more serious about mental health related issues and themes uh, in everyday life. We need to bring this to the front and center, the forefront of the church. Suicide warning signs include talking about suicide or feelings of hopelessness, contacting people to say goodbye, and giving things away. People feeling desperate can get immediate help by calling the Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. Lori Johnson, CBN News. An alarming increase, Pat. You know, folks, depression is real. It's not, it's not just something mm -hmm. figment of somebody's imagination. There are many chemical causes of uh, depression, and a person needs to have uh, clinical blood work done to determine what's going on in their mind, because these things can be there. But I know from personal mm -hmm. experience, and I don't want to alarm anybody. There is such a thing as a spirit of suicide. I mean, it's a demonic spirit. It may play off depression. It may play off drug use. It may play off the environment. It may play off a lot of things. But there is clearly something that brings to a person's mind thoughts of hopelessness, thoughts of, of uh, betrayal. It just goes all down the line. And when it's finished, it's kind of like what's left for you but to kill yourself. But I tell you, to see somebody like Anthony Bourdain, who seemed to be living a, a perfect life as a, as a celebrity chef, to see that happening, Kate Spade dying, but these are just the tip of the iceberg. And uh, 
we, we need, when we find that, we need to get help. And especially if it has a uh, biological foundation, the people need to get treated, and they need to get treated by skillful practitioners. Ephraim. Pat, the Transportation Security Administration has come under heavy criticism on social media after some 9 million people watched a woman's video of TSA agents searching her 96-year-old mother in a wheelchair. CBS News reports the incident took place at Washington's Dulles International Airport on May 15th. TSA told CBS it had no indication the woman was in distress during that check. Jean Clarkson says her mother doesn't want to ever fly again. Unbelievable, Pat. You know, somebody was laughing when I was in a, a van leaving at an airport. He said, you know what TSA stands for? I said, no, it stands for thousands standing around. And that's what they are. They're a bunch of incompetence in the TSA. It is simply appalling how they can misuse their, their thought. And many of them, I mean, they, 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 they seem to be predators and they take advantage of some of the flyers and the uh, approaches of, of body searches are just too intrusive. But there's something more about them. Here's a woman in a wheelchair. To go through that for her it was just an outrageous thing. These people should be fired. They should be terminated. They should not not be allowed to be working for the United States government. But they put on thousands of them uh, by Obama. He just wanted to fill up the ranks of that thing, and it was a good uh, dumping ground for people he wanted to give jobs. And uh, they still aren't trained. They still aren't qualified. Some are, of course. I mean, thank goodness for them. But some of the intrusive behavior that takes place and it's so unwanted. You, you know, Terry, you've been to Israel. You, you know, the, yeah. the, they, 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 I mean, they know what they're doing. They absolutely know what they're doing. And, and you feel a sense of almost intimidation, but at the same time, you realize that security is a huge, huge issue, issue, but nobody touches you. I mean, it's all. <laughs> well, in Israel, they, they pre-screen. They know in advance who's coming who's and coming what the deal and is. And they out. have all mm -hmm. kinds of, of uh, clear signs to notify them that they're dealing with a terrorist or somebody that might blow up a plane. But some, what is she, how old was that woman? 96. 96 year old woman in a wheelchair and to have somebody uh, going all over her body looking for, I mean, what do they think she's going to do? Blow the plane up? I mean, this is nonsense. It really is. You're not staying any safer because of this. It's just an intrusion on the traveling public that ought to be stopped, Ephraim. Pat, Justify has become the 13th horse to win the Triple Crown. The Chestnut Colt crossed the finish line with a lead of nearly two lanes. Jockey Mike Smith celebrated and pointed his praises upward. First and foremost, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for blessing me on this wonderful day. We're all so blessed we made it back safe. This horse ran a tremendous race. He's so gifted. He sent from heaven, I tell you. Smith is the oldest jockey to win the Triple Crown and trainer. Bob Baffert is only the second trainer in history to win the Triple Crown twice. All praises to God indeed, Pat. I tell you, it's an amazing thing. The owner of Justify is a born-again Christian. My daughter knows him and his wife. They live in Dallas. Mike Smith is the oldest jockey. Yeah. And to, this is the first time the second time, I think, in, in like 40 years, and that is an enormously uh, gifted accomplishment because the Belmont is a mile and a half, and it is exhausting. Mm. And after the, the uh, Derby and then after the Preakness, to have a horse that's won both of those, they come back and, and win the pre I mean, the uh, Belmont is just extraordinary. And I mean, it's just, I'm speechless. Everybody's talking about, well, people who were there are so happy they were there to see such a historic event. It was really special. Well, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a big thing. I mean, I don't know how you compare it to other sports, but this is an extraordinary accomplishment because usually what happens when, when horses get to that level, they're pretty much exhausted already. They're only three-year-olds. And uh, to, to run a mile and a half and, and been the, the only other horse that, did that without any trouble with Secretariat, who was just, he was a, a class all by himself. He won the uh, the Belmont, I think, by 31 lengths. It was uh, unbelievable. But this justified, that, that's a Christian name, Justified. I like it. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Well.
What you got? Up next, Fox News anchor Brett Baer revisits a pivotal historic event when President Reagan traveled to Moscow for a meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev. Progress is not foreordained. The key is freedom, freedom of thought, freedom of information, freedom of communication. It gave me goosebumps to listen to it. Find out why Bear believes Reagan's three days in Moscow remains relevant today. Well, we're glad you're with us. I want to tell you, we showed you a, show, a horse show. We've got Princess Maggie's coming back, our, yes. our favorite dog. Are we going to have her with us after the break? She'll lie down next to you and, and, and adoring. Just, <laughs> adoring and love us, and we'll show you that we love animals. But anyhow, before that, President Trump is preparing for his historic summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Thirty years ago, another American president made history as Ronald Reagan met Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. And that meeting is the subject of a new book by Fox News anchor Brett Baer. Jennifer Wishon has that. In 1988, Ronald Reagan and wife Nancy stepped on Soviet soil for his fourth meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev. In the late 80s, the President of the United States traveling to Moscow is comparable to President Trump traveling to North Korea today. This was a huge deal. Huge deal. Had not been done. An American president hadn't been there. And then this president on top of it, someone who called communism, uh, said that it would be on the ash heap of history, and said that the Soviet Union was really the evil empire, and gave that speech at the Berlin Wall saying, tear down this wall, Mr. Gorbachev. Um, for that president, who had been so aggressive to there be in the heart of communism, was quite an event. Brett Baer, anchor of Fox's special report, highlights Reagan's lifelong passion to end communism in his new book, Three Days in Moscow, Ronald Reagan and the Fall of the Soviet Empire. Thank you very much. During his short stay, Reagan spoke to students at Moscow State University in a speech Bear believes hit the tone of his life. It gave me goosebumps to listen to it. That's because it's as relevant today, he says, as it was then. Progress is not foreordained. The key is freedom. Freedom of thought. Freedom of information. Freedom of communication. Imagine the scene, the leader of the world's greatest democracy promoting freedom beneath a towering bust of the father of communism, Vladimir Lenin. At first, Reagan's aides gasped at the setting. And they talk to the organizer and say, can you cover this or move this? Or, and they just say, niet. Um, and then they start talking and they realize that this is the perfect setting for Reagan to deliver this speech. Um, and they write it into the script and it becomes part of his delivery. Freedom, it has been said, makes people selfish and materialistic. But Americans are one of the most religious peoples on earth because they know that liberty, just as life itself, is not earned, but a gift from God. One of the things that I didn't realize about Reagan's journey to this point was how much he uh, promoted the idea of religious freedom again and again to Gorbachev. It was constant. He was constantly saying um, that there needed to be religious freedom. And in one conversation over dinner, uh, he says that he talks about his son Ron, who was an atheist. And he said he wanted to have a giant meal laid out. And after Ron finished the meal, ask him one question and say, do you think there was a cook? And he turns to Gorbachev and said, how do you think he would answer? And Gorbachev smiles and says, yes, there is a cook. You know, and referencing God, obviously, and the atheistic, you know, communist uh, thread that ran through the country. A self-proclaimed history nerd, Bear fears younger generations don't have a deep enough understanding of these world-changing moments in history, which is why he wrote the book. It also comes in a young reader's edition for kids 8 to 14 years old that his sons are reading. The Moscow Summit, he says, is a perfect example of how history can serve as a guide to understand where we're going or even where we are. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, 
Washington. Uh, Brett Baer's book is called Three Days in Moscow. Here it is. It's uh, Ronald Reagan and the Fall of the Soviet Union. It's available where books are sold, and we congratulate him on a very excellent job. There's some pictures in here, by the way, of Reagan as a young man and um, as an uh, announcer and as the husband of Nancy and these other things are very good. You know, when you hear Reagan speak even today, it is, as Brett Baer said, inspiring and stirring. I well, mean, it's not old. he inspired and disturbed me. And, uh, he's a wonderful man. And uh, after he was gone, people were trying to pick up his mantle. And uh, I think that was one of the things that people loved about him. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next? Well, up next, a toddler is found in a swimming pool. She was not getting any oxygen for 10 minutes. I've seen children that have been underwater for less than that and have not made it. She's either going to be brain dead or on a ventilator needing a, a feeding tube for the rest of her life. Watch this little girl defy her prognosis and cause her doctor to pronounce her a miracle. But first, Pat mentioned it, royalties in the house. Princess Maggie joins us live when we come back. As I promise you, I want to introduce my very beautiful uh, Irish water spaniel, Princess Maggie. Maggie, come here. <laughs> come here, baby. Yeah, okay. All right. Hey, you want a treat? All right. She says, do I want a treat? Yeah, okay, there you go. Oh, don't bite me. <laughs> All right. Now, she's, Isn't a, she she's an Irish water, Irish water, Irish water spaniel. spaniel. And they're a special breed, and they're so nice, and they're just such dear. And All you've right. had her since she was little, since All she right. was a puppy, right? Tell you what, All right. you want to roll over? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh, it's so She good. says, yes, I do, Dad. <laughs> All right. She, now, is her, it, her oh, curls... Oh, that's enough. All right, shake hands. That's it. Shake hands. You're such a smart girl. She, oh, she's so smart. Isn't she nice? You have her shaved down, right? Because she'd be curly like this everywhere. If oh, yes. Yeah. She just came from the groomer. All right, come on, jump. Oh, come on. Come on. That's better. Now sit, sit. <laughs> Maggie, it's terrible to have to earn your keep like yeah. that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm working her hard. Isn't she a nice dog? She's a very sweet dog. Yeah, you're a nice dog. You know that, that, that here's your treat. Jeff, All right, one more time. Your tea. All right, do me a favor, lie down. Roll over. That's it. All right, she does. Good girl, Maggie. Okay, you're a good girl. I have no treats, honey. <laughs> yeah, you're a good girl. Okay. She's right. very S sweet. Sit. How Shake old is hand. she now? Uh, I don't know, six maybe. Six. And you know, I have, huh? And is she big for an Irish water spaniel, or is yeah, this a normal cool. size? She weighs about 70 pounds. She's a little wow. fat right now. She, she's been eating too much. She's been rolling over too much. <laughs> yeah, too much. All right, big girl. That's all the time we've got. She's all right, you go over there sweet. with her. All right. Okay. Listens well, too, may I say. She she <laughs> knows what you're saying, you know. She's smart. You better be careful. Oh, I've, I've tried to teach her to learn language, and she she learns language, you know. She, well, that, is the breed known for being good well, and responding? Well, they're known for being like clowns. They're, they're a lot of fun. They just love to do tricks and, and love people. They're just terrific. They're, that's great. Good companion. Good companion. Oh, absolutely. She's marvelous. The only trouble is she, she's all over you. I mean, she climb up. She likes to climb up in your lap and then lick your face. Okay. Well, anyhow, that's for all the dog lovers in our audience. I, you know, I, I, that's my sweet little dog. Yeah. You know, I had one a, a, a Doberman named Blue that I gave to Bill Holder, oh, a remember. beautiful dog. We remember Blue. Well, beautiful. Blue developed some kind of a. Uh, genetic anomaly and and he, he got so he couldn't move and hmm. they had to put him down and it really oh, tore no. but you know bill and his wife had eleven thousand messages of sympathy from people who well, did have his he own a, facebook, he had a facebook page, page. <laughs> maggie does not have one because i'm not i'm too lazy to put together a facebook play for a dog but everything yeah i would think so she's <laughs> an easy keeper though she just stays outside and that's you know, wonderful feed her once a day and that's it well she's obviously attached to you but she's right. very sweet okay well so much for our we, we're animal lovers, as you probably figured, and I, I do know how to train them as well as the same thing with horses. But anyhow, all right, what's next? Well, we turn now to an amazing story of survival and healing. Medically speaking, Ariella Lenny shouldn't be here. 
the 10 minutes that she spent underwater robbed her brain and other vital organs of oxygen. According to her doctor, most children would not have survived. Instead, Ariella is a walking miracle. Nora Lenny vividly remembers the morning of August 19th, 2016. I noticed that it had gone quiet. When it goes quiet and you have a toddler in the house, something's not right. She was going through her morning routine while her husband Patrick was meeting with a handyman. Then, Nora realized her 16-month-old daughter, Ariella, was nowhere to be found. Just ran around Ariella. looking for her, calling her name, didn't hear her, didn't see her. Ariella had found an open door and wandered into the backyard alone. After 10 minutes of searching, Nora discovered her floating in the family's pool. I just grabbed her out of the pool, ran inside with her. She's limp, her lips are blue. She's just dangling in my arms. I'm just like, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Out front, Patrick heard the screams and ran into the house. He found Nora performing CPR on Ariella and called 911. It was just desperation. Lord, heal my daughter. You know, she's dying. I was praying. I was definitely scared. And I, I guess in my mind, I was kind of praying, just saying, Lord Jesus, please let her be okay. Paramedics arrived and had to shock Ariella three times to get a steady pulse. They rushed her to Galasano Children's Hospital in Rochester, New York. She was under 10 minutes, so she was not getting any oxygen for 10 minutes. And your organs, your brain, your heart, they just don't make it. And I've seen children that have been underwater for less than that and have not made it. Veteran pediatric nurse Jill Hartland was on duty in the ER when Ariella arrived. She was not alert, she was not mentating, she wasn't tracking or looking around. Her pupils were fixed and dilated, which tells me that there's increased swelling like in the brain. I was actually told by the doctor, she's probably not gonna live. And if she does live, that she won't be able to walk on her own. She won't be able to feed herself. You know, she's not gonna be the child that you know her today. I looked at the doctor and I just told her, I'm sorry, cannot accept that. It was something that I felt within me that the Holy Spirit was saying to me, this is not the way it's going to end. Doctors put Ariella into a coma to slow the brain swelling and calm her seizures. The first 72 hours were critical to her survival. Meanwhile, Patrick started making calls. All across the country and even overseas, people were lifting Ariella up in prayer. We were getting these prophetic words from people. And yes, with every one that I received, I would read it out loud and read it to my wife and to anyone that was in the room. It did increase my faith. It kind of makes you feel like I'm not in this alone. And you feel the prayers and the love of brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know, this is what the church is called to do. We're called to lift one another up in prayer in our time of need. Nurse Hartland noticed something different about Pat and Nora. Normally, parents are frantic, and it shows. There's no mindfulness or peacefulness. They're just very frantic and very scattered and uncontrollable emotions. But it's almost like they knew that she's in God's hands, and there was a, that kind of peace that was surrounding them. Overnight and into the next day, people prayed, believing God's promise for a miracle, including Pat and Nora's home church. And Lord, we lift Ariella before you to declare and declare that the healing you purchased for her 2,000 years ago is now being manifest in her body. She shall live and not die and proclaim the word of the Lord. By that evening, Ariella's seizures had stopped and the brain swelling was going down but doctors cautioned about her recovery. Most physicians would say that she's either going to be brain dead or on a ventilator, needing a, a feeding tube um, for the rest of her life. The prayers never stopped. And on the third day, Ariella opened her eyes. I was just like, I know my God is doing it. <laughs> He's doing it. I was just like, thank you, Jesus. There's no other explanation for it. In the evening of day three, the doctor was pretty bold and said that she believed that Ariella 
was going to be waking up as they took her off of the sedation uh, to be her normal self without any changes. And she did. Just four days after her accident, Ariella was released to go home. Nurse Hartland was coming into work as the family was leaving the hospital. I was flabbergasted, literally shocked that this little girl that had been in the unit just three or four days prior, poor prognosis, could make such a rapid turnaround in any capacity, but a turnaround that looked like this, where she was a completely normal 16-month-old. Um, it was God. <laughs> There's just no other way to... It was a miracle. Today, Ariella enjoys helping around the house. She's a normal, healthy little girl with no issues from the accident. Ariella would not be here without prayer. There's no way. I believe we just petitioned heaven so mightily that the Lord saw the grief. He saw our grief and our desperation, and He answered the prayer. But for me, it deepened my faith to say that, Lord, if you can do this, there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing too hard for you. God does still answer prayer. He still delivers people. As tragic as these things are, as, as difficult and as heavy as they are, God answers prayer. That is a true statement. And I don't know what you're facing today, but there is nothing too hard for God. And we want to take some time to pray for you and for your needs today. What an incredible story. Wasn't that marvelous? Yes. She should have been brain dead yes. and she should have been paralyzed and she should have been a lot of things, but God intervened. Hey, here's something. Ann, who lived in Arturas, California, had a bad fall, injured her diaphragm. Following week, she heard Terry give this word, somebody else with a problem with your diaphragm muscle. She said, I have no idea what it is, but God just heals you. And guess what? God healed her. And <laughs> Anne's pain just left. All right, Isn't that what awesome? Got? This is Yvonne who lives in Patterson, New Jersey. She was suffering with digestive issues. And one day, Pat, she heard you give this word of knowledge on this show. You said there's somebody that has a gastrointestinal problem that is bedeviling you. You're just suffering all the time, sort of a leaky gut. You need something to reach down and heal you. In the name of Jesus, right now, a creative miracle is taking place. You receive an answer. Well, you had described her issues perfectly. She raised her hands, prayed with you, claimed her miracle, immediately felt the healing happening in her body. And she would like to publicly testify that the 700 Club is for real. Well, I'm glad God she's for real. real. You know, I don't know her. What's her name? Her name is Yvonne of Patterson, New Jersey. I didn't know Yvonne, but isn't that amazing? God knew her symptoms, knew everything that was wrong with her. God knows your address. He knows your name. He knows who you are. And the thing is, he can reach down and touch you. We, we serve a great God. He's a God of miracles. Now, Terry and I are going to join. The Bible says this real clearly. If two of you on earth will agree as touching anything that they'll ask, it will be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. That's what it says. Now, we're going to agree. Father, I agree with my dear sister in Christ. We agree on miracles. We agree on answers to prayer. And there are people in this audience, Lord, who are suffering. And I ask, Lord, that you would heal them. Mm. S somebody, you have a twisted intestine, all those intestines in there. There's something that's been, there's a, it may be diverticulitis, but something isn't right, and your intestines aren't like they ought to be. Put your hand on your abdomen, that area, and just receive an answer in Jesus' name. Terry. Mm -hmm. Someone else, you've had damage to the bridge of your nose, but really traumatic damage, a blow of some kind, and it's affecting your sinuses. Even your vision is affected by it. God's healing that condition for you right now. Lift your hands up and receive it in Jesus' name. Uh, somebody, you, you've got a condition known as hemorrhoids, and it's just been giving you fits and you didn't want to have surgery and right now God just heals you in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Thank you Lord. There's a, a lymph system that's out of whack. Mm -hmm. Your lymph system is not working and God has just reached down and healed your lymph nodes and healed your, your lymph system. Everything will function normally. Terry. 
I just want to affirm that. You know it's you. You have some lumps that have developed under your arms, and they're just going to slowly start to go down, and that system's going to be restored. Amen. Now, Lord, in this audience, there are people who are suffering, who need your help, who are looking for miracles, financial and other, and they're looking for job opportunities, mm -hmm. and they're just saying, give me direction. Lord, may the anointing of the Spirit rest upon them now. May they have the guidance from the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please call us if you receive something from the Lord. We'd love to hear it. We'd like to share your testimony. And uh, we're also glad to pray for you if you need prayer. It's an easy number to remember. It's 707,000. 707,000. Couldn't be easier. If you're out of the area, it's 1-800 and then 707,000. So call. Terry. Well, still ahead, we've got your email. Judy asks, is it possible that some of us are meant to be single forever? Your questions with honest answers. That's later on today's 700 Club. And welcome back to the 700 Club. A ministry to orphans and street children in Mozambique is calling for prayer in the face of possible terror attacks. Islamic terrorists are attacking villages in the Pemba area, reportedly killing at least 20 people. Iris Global, a ministry run by missionaries Heidi and Roland Baker, is in Pemba. The International House of Prayer in Kansas City wrote in a Facebook post Sunday, the Bakers are trying to evacuate 250 children to Johannesburg over the next few days. The Bakers have worked in their ministry in Mozambique for 23 years. Be sure to check CBNNews.com for updates on this story. CBN's Superbook is at Russia's Children's Media Conference. The five-day conference in Moscow highlights children's media from all over the world. CBN had the pleasure of hosting a Superbook booth and presentation to more than 150,000 visitors. Children and their parents were able to learn about the gospel through the presentation, episode screenings, and meeting the Superbook character, Gizmo. You can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com international. Pat and Terry are back with much more of today's 700 Club. It's coming up right after this. Sogdiana's family life was a nightmare. She and her siblings were at the mercy of her abusive father, who savagely beat their mother. Then one day, CBN's Orphan's Promise turned this family's nightmare into a dream come true. Nine-year-old Sogdiana has a big dream. My dream is that one day my mother can have a good, happy life. Because the stark reality for Sogdiana's mother and her four children is a life filled with violence and pain. My father tortured us all night long. We heard my mother's cries of pain and could do nothing. He beat me and threw me down the stairs. When I was pregnant, he even kicked me in the stomach. I was just so afraid. After one savage beating left Nazilia critically injured, she finally left her abusive husband. She found a small house to rent and occasional work as a street vendor. But the children were often hungry and cold. I said, please forgive me. I looked everywhere for more work so they could have something to eat. I prayed and asked God to help us and for my mom to get some money to start a small business. That is her dream. CBN's Orphan's Promise heard about Nazilia and her family and wanted to help. We stocked her pantry with food and provided assistance with overdue bills. We enrolled all four children in our after-school program, where they receive nourishing meals and learn about Jesus. Then we fulfilled Nazilia's dream to rent a small kiosk where she sells coffee and snacks. My dream to start my own business has come true. Thank you. Now I can provide everything my children need. Our prayers were answered. My mother has a happy life now and we always have a good food to eat. You came from far away and helped us and made our dreams come true. Thank you. 
This little family is forever changed by your kindness and generosity. We want to say thank you, 700 Club members. What difference you are making in lives around the world. You know, when people are hungry, when they're desperate, when they've been literally beaten down, as in this scenario, they can hardly hear the message of the love of God. But when someone comes alongside of them, sees the potential and the promise in them, gives them a hand up, not a handout, but an opportunity to have dignity and a future, then it opens their hearts to the message of God's love as well. So thank you. You've, you've caused this family to come full circle and it's made all the difference in the world. If you all would like to be a part of that and you're not a 700 Club member, we want to invite you to join today. It's so simple. Pat mentioned our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I'd like to join the 700 Club. That's a commitment of 65 cents a day, $20 a month. But when we all link arms together, we can and are changing the world. And our our way of saying thank you to you for caring about others is to send you Pat's latest teaching. It's called Angels, Their, purpose, their Power, Presence, and Purpose. And you're going to love this. It's so filled with teaching from the Word of God, but also some incredible testimonies of people whose lives have been touched by angelic beings. And we would love for you to have this. So give us a call. You'll change the world at the same time that you're being influenced and changed by good teaching. So call now. All Time right. for some emails. Well, you ready? Let's do some questions. All right. Okay. This first one, Pat, comes from, uh, well, first of all, I want to say this is Marilyn from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Can I just mention this? Because she saw your DVD. She said, thank you so much for the fantastic Angels DVD. I already knew God uses his angels to help his children on earth, but to see the actual stories of some of them yeah. was great. Right. I will be watching Angels again, and I'm ordering more for my family and friends. So somebody very touched by your all teaching. Right. Question. First question, Judy, is it possible that some of us are meant to be single forever? I've prayed so much that now I'm tired of praying for a husband. I'm not growing younger and I've given up. Is it in the Bible that some of us are meant to be single until the end? Well, you know, the Bible says that he puts the lonely in families. And so I, I think God wants to put everybody into a loving family of some kind or other. But uh, are some meant to be single? I, I don't know whether they're meant to or not. What, what do you, I don't think they are meant to be. Some choose to be. You know, I'm yeah. thinking of priests, and even in the Bible, it talked about sure. people who Will, give their lives. I mean, prophetesses who, mm -hmm. uh, you know, years, uh, uh, decades into widowhood, and that's the way they were. So, I mean. But the uh, desire of Judy's heart seems to be to be in a relationship well, she with wants someone. To get knows. married. You know, I tell you, ladies, I just want you to know the worst thing that you can do if you want to get a husband is to look like you desperately want one. <laughs> That's true. I mean, yeah. it's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, they think there must be something wrong with you if this is the way it is. Be a little hard to get and see if it doesn't help. They, they, they like to chase rather than be chased. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Rhonda who says, if a husband divorces his wife and then refuses on several occasions to provide for her, even in the smallest way, but has instead done things to purposely sabotage her professionally and in other ways, what can she do? Should this wife remain unmarried for the rest of her life? I don't think so. <clears throat> You're already divorced. He's severed the, the union, and I presume that he's got a divorce and probably remarried or something, but... Uh, he's left you. And the Bible says very clearly, if the unbelieving spouse is pleased to depart, let them depart. Brother or sister is not bound in a case like this. But <clears throat> if he's out sabotaging your business, then you have legal recourse. You, you might look for a lawyer to have him stop that. I don't know what he's doing, but if he's calling your boss and, and to, you know, slandering you and stuff like that, it, that is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, this is Dara who says, why does God let people live to old age to sit all day and be very lonely? <laughs> I, I, You're asking I, the wrong person, Dara. <laughs> I, I think we ought to stop doing it, frankly, you know. All right. I, 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 you know, you know, your life is what you decide to make of it. And I know if people are sitting around, there's a lot you can do. You can pray, you can talk, you can get on the telephone, you can you can do a lot of things. So you don't have to sit that way. But the, I've seen people in nursing homes, they're so hopeless. And why doesn't God just kill them? Well, that's what you're asking. And I could not possibly give you an answer. 
Hi. Okay, this is Kathy, who says, isn't the story of Noah a picture of the rapture, God saving his children from destruction? Oh, let me tell you about this rapture thing. I believe in the rapture. I believe in at the end, the Lord's going to come, send out his angels, gather his elect from the four corners of the earth, and then he will come in the clouds of glory. That's what the Bible says. And at the end of times, he, he's going to catch us up. But it's not going to be the idea of a select few being caught up to heaven while everybody else is going through some tribulation. The Bible does not teach that. I'm sorry to tell you. The Bible says immediately after the tribulation of those days, then shall the sign of the Son of Man appear in heaven. So that's what's going to happen. And no, Noah is not a type of that. We leave you with this power minute from the Psalms. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God bless all of you. Thank you for being with us. And so Terry and I, this is Pat Robertson, and we will see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye-bye.